Hey guys, welcome back to Fair Iron and Customs. This is Michael. This is the video that almost didn't happen today. <laughs> it's been a heck of a week, guys. Um, I haven't really had time to do anything. Haven't had any time to prepare for a video. Um, I have been uh, getting parts in for the Ford. I got a set of 14 thousandths uh, offset dial pins. Uh, I don't think you can see those, how they're offset. Maybe you can on a set of seven thousandths offset dials. I think the seven, sevens are the one we're going to... Uh, I went back and watched the video on how to set up the index of bell housing. And the amount... I went and re-measured re the amount that it was off. And I came up, measured it two or three more times, and it was only at 20 thousandths. So I need a dial. Uh, you only need to adjust half of that. And we'll get into that when we're setting it up. I'm going to have the video about finishing up the, the uh, transmission. It just started raining again. <laughs> Maggie is going to get muddy. Anyway, that's the muddiest dog. <laughs> she won't get muddy from one end to the other. Um, so I'm going to stop and put her in the house, but, uh, so we'll get into that when we're finishing up the last part of the video, which will be probably later on this month sometime. I have spent, uh, quite a bit of time working on Valerie's car. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to work out all the spots on the top. I got the other side stripped down. We're almost ready to put the 2K primer on it. What is that doing? There's so many features on this camera, I can't figure it out. So, all right. I'm getting ahead of myself, too. This is something else that I picked up for the engine. Uh, it is a starter spacer for a Windsor Cleveland. And I had unwrapped the motor. If you look right here, you can see how our spacer is higher than the block is on the flathead and on the Windsor the block is even got I think is even is spaced out even more than that but what this does is the spacer goes there where you can use an automatic starter on a manual flywheel so that's going to open up some possibilities and I was looking at the starter on my ranger and i'm thinking that we're going to have enough clearance to put a stock starter if i can get an automatic starter because there's a manual in my truck but the starter is going to be shaped the same except for the bendix and the end housing but if i can get an automatic starter with that spacer to fit on that flywheel i think it's going to clear the block so we're going to check into that um glenn and i are going to go back out to the salvage yard probably maybe early next month after I get this car painted um, and I've kind of shoved it back trying to get some other things done there I mean there you know life happens so uh, but anyway today what I want to do is uh, make a shrinking fork I'm gonna need it whenever I get ready to make the rear quarters on my car So what I'm trying to say is is if you look at the back of the car where it rolls around it rolls around when it, the fender comes down flat it rolls around the back of the car and it rolls around under the car and there is a roll right here and the only way to do that you could do what Fitzy does you could you know shape it out weld it up um, which would be a challenge for me because you know anytime you're messing with sheet metal you know it's, it's a challenge welding sheet metal and keeping it straight. That's, that's a challenge. Um, but the challenge I want to take for myself is to take that English wheel and a shrinking hammer, and, I mean a shrinking stump and a shrinking fork and make that panel with that wheel and a fork and a hammer. You know, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't care how long it takes, you know, I'm not, it's uh, not a situation where I got to have it done right now. I would rather teach myself how to do it that way rather than, I'm not saying what Fitzy does is wrong. He does a 
fine job with what he does. I just want to teach myself this way. Um, anyway, uh, Glenn's here. He's going to look at some stuff. Then I'm going to come back and light the forge and we're going to get into it. Ugh. All right, guys, uh, we're bringing this uh, piece of uh, steel up temperature. This is just an old cold spring. It could be a little hotter than what it is. I'm going to get it uh, a little straighter than what it is again. And what we're going to do is start drawing it out. This is going to be the end where the fork is. And I'm going to put it back in the fire because this is not near hot enough. Alright guys, I'm just trying to draw this out. I've got pretty much the shape of one. I'm trying to make it at a taper so it's fatter right here than it is at the tip. Glenn's probably going to start joking about that when I turn the camera off. And to draw out a piece of metal, you have to make it a square shape. You can't draw out a round shape. It's got to be square so you can make it smaller and longer. Anyway, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, um, I've got this pretty much drawn out shape kind of like I want it to start splitting it. And all I'm going to use is this chisel to split it with. Um, hopefully it won't go anywhere. We gotta work this pretty quick because we're gonna lose our heat. The anvil is gonna draw the heat right out of it. So this is probably gonna take several heats to do this and I should be using a different hammer. So what I'm gonna try to do is draw a line straight down the middle of this. Like I said, this is a piece of coil spring, so it should be 5160. All right, I'm gonna take a couple heats and we'll come back. I wanted to make a note. I just took a piece of, uh, of 18 gauge that I had. You see I hit the anvil right there and left the mark in it. Uh, and that may have been earlier. But uh, when you're cutting through something, you want to protect that face of your anvil. Especially if you got a hardened anvil that's mild. So um, no harm, no foul really. And well, I'll be daggone. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Oh, I burned the steel. Well, that sucks, man. Uh, let me correct this. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Um, we're going to try this again without burning the steel this time. Uh, <clears throat> so I just made it a little longer. No harm. Um, it's like the thing about knife makers. Knife makers don't make mistakes. They make smaller knives. Anyway, if I could hold on to the piece of uh, steel, let's see if we still got enough heat. We're trying to get where I want it to be. We're trying to split the fork out so we can start working each individual side of the fork to get it rounded down and back to a round, and I cannot hold on to it. All right, guys, so what we're trying to do, I've switched to a smaller hammer. I'm just trying to get my picks consolidated down to kind of a conical shape, a really slow, uh, long cone, trying to get the and let's go back in the heat. Uh, this will be a whole lot easier to make. All you have to do is get two pieces of round rod and grind them down to cone shapes and weld them together to a handle if that makes any sense um, I just thought I'd like to try forging this out in the forge and I keep getting too hot and I've even turned them no I turned it back up shame on me And again, I cannot keep my hand on it. Once your metal gets down smaller, it's a whole lot easier to make mistakes. It's a whole lot easier to overheat it. It's a whole lot easier to like I said, make mistakes. Is that a cold shut? I'm trying to get some heat back in that. That one's almost the shape that I want it to be. 
I'm thinking we're going to break out a file and do a little work on it, a uh, hot file work to it. I'm going to get the other side up to where that one is and we'll come back. All right, guys, I'm just working this down and taking this last heat. I'm going to get I'm working it right down into a black heat. Um, I've got this side looking pretty good. If you work it into a black heat, you kind of get to get the lumps and bumps out of it so bad. You don't want to move it. You just want to uh, kind of get the shape refined, if that makes any sense. It's like you're putting body fit. That's your black heat. Your little bit there at the end kind of worried there may be a crack right there we'll see when we start using it it could be a little nicer but like I said I just wanted to try forging this out I'm gonna get that spot right there warmed up it's hard for me to see the camera in this angle I'm gonna try to get that spot warmed up and I'm gonna work on it with a uh, half round file and just try to get that ugliness out just a just a half round file I'm gonna bring it to a red heat and I'm gonna file on it Put it in the vise and we'll file it. All right, guys, I got it in the file in the, and we're just in the vise and we're just trying to get this edge right here down in this groove to look a little better and trying to keep my fingers out of it because it's hot. You can still figure a black heat is up to probably about, I think it's 500, 600 degrees. So at a black heat, it will still burn you. I'm going to file that a couple more times and we'll come back. All right, guys, I got the fork where I'm kind of happy with it. Now we got to loop it around and make a handle on it. So we're going to have to be careful. I may should have made the handle to begin with. And I may ha have to get in here with the grinder and do a little finishing up so it doesn't dig into the metal. But I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, so I'm going to get started on this handle and we'll come back. All right, guys. I uh, off camera took the guillotine tool and consolidated and kind of uh, separated the tool from the handle, so I can work right up to it. Try to keep the heat out of the. Try to keep the heat out of the tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take several heats, get this drawn out, and make a handle out of it. Alright guys, I've decided that I'm going to go a little different direction on the finish on this. I'm just going to give it a, take my ball peen hammer and give it a hammered texture on the handle. I was going to do a twist, uh, but I'm kind of running out of time for this video. Um, if I'm going to have it edited and uploaded by in the morning. Let's get a better hand on this. And you know, I like the hammer finish too, so we're just going to give it a hammer look. Hope we didn't take too much of that hammer look out of it. All I'm using is like an 8 ounce ball peen hammer. Using the ball peen side of it. Give it a little bit of a hammered texture to it. And it looks pretty good. That'll help it hold in your hand a little really nice. It's a little. Uh, where I was running in the guillotine tool. It don't look great. But I do want this to have kind of a rough finish to it. Don't want nothing to catch on the hand or the metal. Let's brush it. Well, let me put a touch mark on it and then we'll brush it. Guys, that's hot. Anybody ever ask why I don't wear gloves? Because I can't find a pair of gloves to fit my hands. And I've looked. And I put the R upside down. There's a mistake. Let's see if I can put the O upside down. That's a joke, guys. That is a joke. All right. Get this thing brushed up, put a little twist in it, a little bend in it, 
get it back to temperature, put a bin in it, and brush it one more time, and then we'll finish up. All right, guys, there's the uh, tucking fork right there. I still got a little brushing to do to it when it gets uh, cool. It's still too hot to touch. Like I said, this is 5160. If I try to water cool this, it is liable to crack. So we're gonna let it just cool down and I will finish it tomorrow. And I wanna kind of give you a demonstration if you're not familiar about what a tucking tool is supposed to do and i'm going to try this because i've never done this before and that's the reason why i'm making a tool but what you're going to do like the fender on that car the back of it is rolled under here it's rolled around here and it's rolled under here so you can't make that bend like that and this will come in handy for making a half sphere a motorcycle gas tank any shape that you've got to shrink and that's what the point is and I'm gonna try to use my um, scrolling pliers to create tucks in this and what you would do is you're gonna create a tuck in the metal one way and then you'll create a tuck the other way and you'll create a tuck this way then you'll create a tuck that way it's depending on how much you want to shrink it you may have to do this several times alright and from what I understand how you do this you take, I'm going to grab, uh, where did my ball pin go? And what you want to do, can you see, can you guys see that? Uh, I'm going to get a stump to do this with. And what you want to do, you don't want to bend this down. You want to bend the center down. You want to bend the centers of the tucks down. And then you bend them flat. And that creates it, makes it shrink. And like I said, it's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a bunch of practice on my part to get to where I am, feel like I'm comfortable doing this. But um, Carl Fisher on Make Customs has a really good uh, video on making a shrinking tool on his channel. Um, there are several different people I have seen uh, do shrinking. I do need a stump, like I said. We just want to lock these in. And supposedly when you lock the tips of them in, it keeps the metal behind it from being able to come back out. And then when you flash it back out, it shrinks the metal out. Of course, we need a stump that would have a dish in it in order to create that tuck. So anyway, expect to see me do more of that in the future all right guys hope y'all enjoyed that episode um like i said uh, this is just some uh, 26 gauge so it's nowhere near 18 gauge i got a lot of practice to do on this before i get to making those fenders on the car i'm looking forward to expanding uh, my skill set or attempting to expand my skill set into the point of making more complex shapes than just a flat piece of metal to go on a car um and you know there's many ways to do it uh, like i said and you can see as i pull that back out huh, i'm all over the place there's many ways to do it so i mean i'm not saying any way is wrong i just want to try to do it this way a while and try to expand my skill set it's just one of the things for me i like doing blacksmithing i like making knives I like, uh, if you've seen the videos, I've made some guitars. Um, it's just, I like to do something different and I love automobiles. I've always loved automobiles since I was, you know, very small. So, um, you know, I feel like one thing builds upon another. And what I was gonna say is you can see whenever I tried to pull that back around, it still got that shrunkness to it. And what you would do is uh, you'd planish it either with a planishing hammer or I want to make, uh, I've got some fork lift forks around here. I want to make some anvils, some rounded anvils to do some different, uh, some different radius curves. And you can just take uh, your body hammer and, and planish it on that, you know, planish it on that curve and get it the shape you want and get all the lumps and bumps out of it. Or you can take it to the English wheel and uh, roll all those bumps back out if I could get to the English wheel we might would uh, roll some of these lumps and bumps out and see what would happen 
Hang on. All right, let's see what we can do with this English wheel. Now, I only have one die for my English wheel. I do need to get the rest of them. We don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. We just want enough to get the box out of it. Um, I would fare better with a flatter die. This, um, this is kind of a medium radius on this die. So it's going to force some curve into this piece of metal. Oops, so small I'm getting my fingers in the wheel guys and that sucks. Yeah, so there you go. As you can see it's got a little, you know, shrunk along that edge and it's got some, uh, it's got some crown to it. And technically you can shrink it enough, you'll be able to shrink it enough to make a dish. And like I said, it's just another another thing for me to learn to do. And um, that would be my suggestion to you guys. You know, if you want to expand your repertoire, be able to do something, other different things, get out there in the shop and do it. You know, watch some YouTube videos. I'm watching a new channel. It's called um, it's called Innovative Prototypes, I believe, is the uh, channel. Um, it, I'm just blown away. It's like it, there's like this click moment between stuff that I've seen Carl do and stuff that I've seen Ray Shaleen do and stuff that I've seen Fitzy and anybody else do. And if you watch enough of this channel, you pick up tips and like welding, you know, you're a long seam where you're doing the cutting, but how to uh, make your tacks, ground your tacks down and planish those tacks out to take the tension out of the panel so it doesn't fold in when you're building it. So there's a lot of good information out there, guys. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm here for y'all's entertainment purposes. I hope you enjoy uh, what I'm doing. You know, if you do, like, subscribe, come back. We're gonna get back on that 50 at some point because uh, that, that car is gonna get painted and it's going out of here. I promise you. <laughs> See y'all later.